This cheese making video is sponsored by Little Green Workshops. Well g'day curd nerds, today we're making triple cream cheese. Triple cream, it's a bit of a tongue twister, is just a style of cheese. Uh, it's a usually a white bloomy rind cheese. And I'll just take them out of the box just to show you. Ooh, they're delicate little babies. There we go, we've got the right humidity going. We've got some nice little fuzzy cheeses going on here. The reason they're called triple cream cheese is because the amount of cream in this cheese are insane. So, essentially, you've got 3.5 litres of milk and 500 millilitres of cream. So the fat content of these cheeses are going to be very high. Uh, I've used Geo and I've used Penicillium uh, Candidum as the two white moulds for this cheese, and uh, they, are going to be absolutely delightful. A little bit of a, not ammonia smell, a little bit of an earthy smell at the moment um, as they're starting to ripen. But anyway, we'll get onto that. Let me show you how I made the triple cream cheeses. So firstly, sanitize all of your equipment, uh, all your stainless steel stuff I just boiled and all the plastic stuff I just sprayed with white vinegar. So the ingredients for triple cream are 3.5 litres or 3.7 quarts of unhomogenized cow's milk, 500 millilitres or 17 fluid ounces of pure cream, one eighth of a teaspoon of Floridanica aromatic mesophilic culture, one sixteenth of a teaspoon of Penicillium candidum, one sixty-fourth of a teaspoon of Geotrichum candidum, 1.25 millilitres or quarter of a teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. 1.25 millilitres or quarter of a teaspoon of single strength rennet diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. And some cheese salt. So first of all warm the cream in hot water for 10 minutes. I just put it in the water that I boiled all of the ingredients in. So 10 minutes later, I'm now pouring the milk into the stainless steel pot. I'm using an eight litre or two gallon pot there. So then add the cream into the milk and get whisk that in. Just get all the cream out of the jug that I use there using a silicon spatula. Then mix the milk and the cream together well. So we're going to heat the milk and cream to 31 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So I've just covered that so no dust gets into the milk while it's heating up. Now, as it continues to heat, I'm just going to add the calcium chloride nice and early in the process so I don't forget it. So give that a quick whisk. And then we're going to cover that and continue to wait for it to heat. So just give that a quick stir. I'm just checking the temperature now. And it is at uh, 31, which is spot on. So just still mixing that cream and milk together. And now we're going to add the cultures and the moulds to the milk. So there's the Floridanica there. Just going to sprinkle that over the surface of the milk. And now I'm adding the Penicillium Candidum. Sprinkle that over the surface there. And 
And now the Geo Trichum. Candidum. So allow those to rehydrate for five minutes. Then after five minutes, just stir in the cultures and molds. Now the cream tends to float to the top. That's why I'm using a whisk to put it back in there. Now we're going to cover and allow to ripen for 60 minutes. So just uh, giving that another whisk to make sure the cream doesn't keep floating to the top. Just one final check of the temperature. It's still at 31, which is great. And now we're ready to proceed with the next step. So we're going to add in the rennet solution. Just pour that in whilst we're stirring. and stir for no more than one minute. So cover that and allow the milk to set for one hour and 30 minutes. So we're going to check for a clean break to make sure that it has coagulated. And yep, that looks lovely and clean. Nice firm set there. So now I'm going to cut the curds vertically into 2.5 centimeter or one inch columns. Just using my thumb as a guide to the first knuckle is one inch. So I'm just cutting those in vertical columns and I'm going to allow the curds now to heal for five minutes. So five minutes later, we're going to do the horizontal cuts. This is a little bit tricky. I'm doing in the 45 degree angle. Try and make them 2.5 centimeter or one inch and they'll come out kind of cube shaped. We don't want the curds to be too small. So we're going to allow them to heal for another five minutes just so they firm up. So five minutes later, we're just going to gently stir the curds without breaking them up too much. And we're going to do that for 10 minutes. So the heat stays at 31 degrees Celsius, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I haven't changed the temperature at all. So as you can see, I'm gently lifting the curds. I don't want them to shrink too much. And we do that over the period of 10 minutes. So 10 minutes later, you can see that they have shrunk a fair bit, not too much. They're probably about one centimeter cubes now and have released a little bit of whey. So that's good. You don't want this cheese to be too dry. So we're gonna allow the curds to settle now for five minutes, just in the pot to make it easier to get them out in a minute. Five minutes later, I'm just going to remove all of the heating equipment. So the precision cooker, let's get that out the way. And we're going to drain all of the water out of the sink. So they haven't really shrunk too much because there's very high fat content uh, and they haven't settled to the bottom very much either over that period. They tend to float a little bit. So I'm getting a colander and a tight weave butter muslin or cheesecloth. Just putting that in there. And we're going to drain the curds through the tight weave cloth. Now I'm using a ladle. It's a little bit more gentle than just pouring them in there. Because they are quite fragile, these curds. 
So just ladle the curds into the cloth. Ladling, ladling. There we go, all done. So I'm just uh, gathering the cloth there a little bit just to release a little bit more of the whey. I'm not squeezing or anything. So we're going to cover that now. And we're going to allow the curds to drain for 30 minutes in the cloth. So 30 minutes later, we remove the lid and we're going to ladle slices of the curd into the four small baskets. Now, how big are these baskets, I hear you say? Well, the dimensions are 8.5 centimetres across the top and they are 8 centimetres high or 3.5 by 3 inches. They're known as St. Marcelin baskets. So I managed to get all the curds in there. We're going to allow it to drain for 24 hours at room temperature or 21 Celsius or 70 Fahrenheit. You can see this is sped up footage. They're rapidly draining there, which is amazing. Now we don't flip the cheeses just yet. We wait until about five hours into the draining and they're firm enough to be able to flip, be able to be flipped in their baskets. So they're not falling apart there, they're quite firm-ish. Just be gentle when you do this. There we go. So just flipping top to bottom and pop them back into the baskets. Nice one. Just give them a bit of a bang because they're not completely all towards the bottom. So that helps. Now we're going to drain those overnight. So this is the end of day one. Before I carry on with the video, allow me to introduce this week's sponsor, Little Green Workshops. Many of you have asked over the years where I get all of my ingredients for my cheese making recipes. Well, it just so happens that Kim, my lovely wife and I, started a business called Little Green Workshops just for that very reason. We supply cheese making equipment, kits, ingredients, and other supplies to the home cheese maker. So because I use Little Green Workshops cheese making supplies and ingredients, I know they're good. They work for me. The proof is in the videos that I release to you. We ship to many countries throughout the world and the cheese making supplies get there in perfect condition, ready for you, the home cheese maker, to make the myriad of cheeses that I show on the channel. So Little Green Workshops has a special deal for you, the curd nerds who regularly watch the channel. So use the coupon code Triple Cream to get 10% off your next cheese making order and we will ship it out to you. So on with the cheese making video. So at the start of day two, we're going to flip the cheeses again in their baskets. And we've got quite a nice rind on top there and they are firming up well. So the flipping helps expel more whey. So just turn them all over. A bit of a bang to help them settle down to the bottom. And then we're going to put the food umbrella back over the top of them to keep the beasties out. So that was about eight hours to go. So with about four hours remaining, we're just going to flip the cheeses for the last time. And they've firmed up very well. So at the completion of the draining in the baskets, we're going to remove the cheeses from their baskets. Just put them on an extra mat I've got there. 
And we're going to do the first salting. So we're going to salt the cheese with a quarter of a teaspoon uh, for each cheese, just on the top. Just a sprinkle over the top. And we're going to do the sides just a little bit. It's very hard to do the sides, but I'll show you a trick near the end. So we're doing the top and the sides if we can. The salt doesn't really stick on the sides very well. But don't do the bottom just yet. So pop the food umbrella back on top again. And we're going to cover and allow the cheese to rest for six hours. That helps with the salt absorption. Okay, six hours later, we're going to flip each cheese over. And then we're going to salt the remaining side with another quarter of a teaspoon uh, for each cheese. And I'm doing a little bit on the sides there. Where I can, it doesn't really stick on. So we're going to place the cheese just into a ripening box. Just helps it drain a little bit better. Uh, and Kim wanted to use the sink, so I had to vacate it. So don't put the lid on. We don't need them locked up just yet. So we're going to leave them overnight at room temperature for that salt to absorb in. Righto, so day three, we're going to sprinkle uh, one teaspoon of salt onto, uh, I've got a clean baking tray there. So I'm just pouring on four one quarters of the salt and then I'm going to roll the sides of the cheese in the salt. I didn't think I had um, got enough coverage on the sides and it's really tricky to get the side salted properly. So that's a good quick way. So I'm going to air dry at room temperature now for 24 hours until they're touch dry or feel like a clammy handshake. So I'm just going to remove the cheese from the ripening box. What I should have done is tested to see whether they'll dry or not. A little bit of moisture had got out. Now I'm placing a damp cloth in the bottom of the ripening box to help raise the humidity when I close the box up. So place the cheeses into the ripening box. Now I actually had to clean that mat that was in there, in the ripening box. That's why you can see the cheeses on a different mat, but you may not have to. Uh, they were not quite touch dry, uh, so I had to wait for a further four hours. So once they were touch dry, just one final flip. Now it's ready, they're ready for maturation once I do this flip. We're going to mature in the ripening box at 13 Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit at 90 to 95% relative humidity for four days. Uh, don't forget to turn them daily. Now triple cream can be eaten fresh at the four days or ripened further to 10 to 14 days for a stronger cheese. So over to Gav. So as you can see, I've got the humidity just right in the ripening box. It's about 90% humidity in there. Um, the cheeses are indeed growing their mold uh, very, very rapidly. Uh, this is day six of the make and I've already got a white covering around them all. Um, they do say we should ripen them to 10 days. So there's four more days left to go uh, and uh, we will do a taste test on them then. So before we go much further though, what I do need to do is, uh, is, is just give my hands a quick clean and then I'll turn them over. So now that my hands are clean, we'll just give them a quick flip. So just gently that's oh, perfect, we've got my white mold growing on the bottom as well. Absolutely spot on. 
So I couldn't be more pleased with this cheese at the moment. But yeah, really good looking cheeses. Um, we'll come back in a couple of days and do a taste test. So the triple cream has been maturing now for 14 days. Uh, let's have a look at these, because they're ready to eat now. You don't mature them for any longer. Oh, goodness me. Um, they look really good. Oh, that smells like honey. Honey smell? Nice. I'll get them out all out. On their tray. There was a bit of moisture on the lid, you can see there. So I have been turning them every two days, uh, which is, you know, absolutely perfect. See, they shouldn't, there you go, come off the bottom perfectly. And, oh, I'll tell you what, they've got a lovely coating of white mould around them now, all over. Um, even where you can see I've been turning it, but definitely on the sides. So much so that you can actually pat it down a little bit. But yeah, so that's that's perfect. So let's, we'll transfer one to the board for eating. There we go, I'll put the rest of these away. I'll wrap these up and then put them in the kitchen fridge from now. I, I wouldn't want them any, maturing any further. Uh, but yeah, it smell, smells like honey. That's amazing. Put those over here. So here we have our triple cream, perfect little thing, lovely white coating. You can eat them fresh, um, as I mentioned before, but let's cut into one. We should do a little wedge. Well, the knife comes out fairly clean. Let's get a wedge. Come on, baby. Oh, nice. Oh. So, this is going to have quite a high fat content. A bit fell out. Just... Yeah, it's really creamy. Um, so, let's, let's try. It still smells like honey. Oh, that, that's an amazing smell. Fragrance. More like fragrance. Yeah, why not? Oh, goodness me. A little bit of, it's not sharpness. Um, yeah, mushroom, a little bit, little bit, tiny, tiny bit of mushroomy. Some great flavours in there. It's certainly a creaminess that just melts in the mouth. Uh, buttery, a little bit of, a um, little bit acidic. Just, just a tiny bit, tiny bit. But my goodness. Yeah, that was a bit without the rind. That was just cre a creamy, milky explosion with a little bit of, uh, maybe, maybe but I can't really tell between uh, a little bit acidic or sour, but mushroomy. And, and it's actually, to my fingers, because of the heat of my fingers, it's starting to melt in my fingers. Mmm. It's like a, a well a cream cheese on steroids. Oh, that is so good. Goodness me. Nothing like a camembert. Um, it, yeah, the, the, the fat content really gives something to it. It's really good. But certainly it's got a it's got a unique maturity. I think if I had it eaten it fresh, it just would have tasted like milky. But now that it like ripened for you know 14 days and it's got the white mold coating, and that's given some of the protein some time to break down a little bit in the milk and create some unique flavours, but that. That is delicious. Oh, the mouthfeel is just spectacular. A little bit goes a long way. 
so good. Nice on crackers too. It's like, it's not like totally runny. Still a little bit pasty, um, chalk, no, not chalky. Um, a little bit crumbly, but you won't be disappointed. It's got a full flavor. It's not, it's not like a gooey camembert. It's more robust than that. I think if I aged it a little bit less, maybe, maybe around the 10, maybe even the seven day mark, it certainly wouldn't have this robust flavor. So 14 days, I think, for me, for my personal taste, this is spot on. That's amazing flavor in a fresh cheese. So there you have it, curd nerds. That's triple cream, homemade um, and ready to eat in about 14 days. You can obviously eat it a lot less, but <clears throat> that has an outstanding flavor. I would not mature it any longer than this. I wouldn't expect it to go gooey in the middle because it's got such a tall profile, but the flavors, oh, they're just, they're outstanding. Uh, it's a really, really good cheese. So go and try triple cream. I can't say enough about this lovely little white mold cheese, except the buttery notes and the flavors are just out of this world. They're just amazing. So you can get all the ingredients over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Um, the molds, I'm not sure where you'd be able to source those. I bought those molds years ago and the manufacturer discontinued them. Um, but a smaller mold, a camembert mold would be a bit wide, but um, and it'd have a taller cheese profile. But these are uh, what are known as St. Marcelin molds and uh, they're perfect size for this, uh, for the triple cream. Delicious little cheese. Anyway, thanks for watching, curd nerds, and I'll see you next time.